we're at the home of Janine and John van Rooyen picking up on the conversation we started at Business Connect. And we're going to check out what they do in their day, like meet the kids, hang out with them on the beach, and then take a moment to chat business and life and leadership and faith and all things God. So let's see what they're up to. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Bright and early, hey? Good, man. Nice and cool this morning. I know. Did your kids get up at the same time as you? No, no. So it's a summer. She's just got up now, so she's very grumpy. She's got herself dressed. Jethro's still sleeping in his bed. What's up, big guy? How's the chair? It's like, we miss those people there. Nice to see you, man. It's more chocolate. Thanks for letting us interrupt your world this morning at 5.30 a.m. through the door in the dark. Yeah. And poor little Jethro was like, and he was like half asleep. Shame. Shame. I felt bad. But I think that's the beauty of um, uh, like these moments is mm. the capture behind the scenes. Yeah. Like people love the chat we had at church, that business breakfast. Oh, is, oh, so awesome. many people have commented. They've said oh. like, and this is kind of why we did this. They were like, where's version 2.0? Oh, that's so cool. So we're going to try and pull some more gold out, yeah. but um, all that to say thanks. You guys are amazing. Thank you. It's been cool actually just hanging out with you yeah. and John. The last time morning. we hung out, we were wearing a red and yellow life-saving baggies oh on Salt gosh, Rock Main Beach. Oh my funny. I thought you were going to hop on that Mali and take a paddle, man, this I wanted morning. to. Yeah, I was like so unprepared for it. I was like, I don't know. Anyway. But you guys are fascinating, Janine, and I'll be honest, because when we chatted at the business breakfast, there was a lot about Unilever, mm. and you kind of climbed the rungs, and you're in different leadership levels, and you spoke about just faithful steps and all this kind of stuff. But when I see your home, I realize there's a whole lot more going on um, behind yeah. the scenes, like family. Mm. Yeah. So you told me growing up, your family never had much money. Tell me a little bit about that. those years. Your dad died when you were really young. Yes, yeah. So... My dad died when I was three years old. Um, Shami had a work accident. He also worked on the railways and oh. he got crushed by machinery or something. And he was still alive and everything. He went to hospital. And I think in those days, they didn't really pick up like internal, like bleeding and stuff like that. So my mom was with him and thought he would be okay. And then three days later, his whole system started shutting mm. down. And she had to literally make the decision to switch the machines oh, off. Wow. So hectic. And you know, it's so interesting because much later in life, her and I have sat and I've spoken to her about, I want to understand, like, what did you go through, you know? Because that's traumatic, right? I mean, no one so should have to So traumatic, I promise you. Um, and she just said, like he just said, he never wanted to be a vegetable. And that was his will. And so she had to make that decision, which was super hard on her. And I think, you know, after that... My, my, my dad's, well, my dad at that time, his mom, she became so, like, focused on me because I was all that was left of him. So it was just you to that family? It was just me and, and then, obviously, my mom, but I was the only one she had of my dad left, yeah. you know. So I spent so much time with her to go up to Joburg and just, you know, I had, like, she was my Omar and, you know, we had such a beautiful relationship. She was such a wonderful woman. Um, so, yeah, so after that... Um, about a couple of about two years later, my mom met my stepdad James, okay. and uh, yeah, it was kind of a love at first sight kind of thing. It was actually a setup. They set them up on like a blind date, <laughs> and um, yeah, they just hit it off. And apparently, my mom said no. Um, he was very like a handyman, so he came to fix the washing machine. I love that. And he left something there, like his shirt. I was like, why do you have not have a shirt on? But anyway, let's not go down that we road. We need to tell these stories to the young <laughs> generation. We have to help them see I how powerful you. it is to be good at DIY. And not on a damn app. This was like exactly. legitimately proper, like, you know. Man work. And then he obviously went to go pick it up. And then and then my mom was kind of dating someone else. And she said, she like gave him this ultimatum. She's like, okay, so listen, either you're going to ask me out or I'm going to go out with this other guy, Roger. I think his name was Roger. And she was like, so this is your, your moment, you know? And he was like, no, okay, I'll take you out, you know? <laughs> and that's where it started. And six months later, they so were married. So you definitely got some of your mom's blood for this yeah, is how it's going to be. this is how it's going to be. Um, and six months later, they were married. So both knew what they wanted. So, so you were young love. though, right? You said three when, when this three all happened. Three years old, so yeah. So like super young. But then you mentioned that it, almost in you, you started seeing, uh, you like took on the mom role of the home. Yeah, so like I think... 
just, I had to step up. Like, even though I was so young, my mom always said, Janine, you were the most easiest kid. Like, I never had to worry about you. You just looked after yourself. And I think, even though she probably felt like she was dealing with the death and everything in a good way, she almost closed herself off yeah. and was trying to manage it in her own way. And I was kind of left to sort myself out. And I worried about her as well, you know. And I never wanted to let her down. I always wanted to, her to be proud of me all through my life. Like, I was like, I never want you running around worrying about, am I going to pass? Am I going to... Let me take care of that. It's okay. Do you think that kicked in on the back of your dad dying? Or do you Absolutely. think you were always going to be like that, leave me independent? Do you think there was more to it because of... I definitely think so. So life shapes us. Absolutely. Life, life shapes us. Um, and then, yeah, then once she met my dad and got married... Um, I was always this independent kind of person. She never had to stress about me. Um, and then my sisters came along, and um, that was a completely new dynamic. I like three girls. Three girls and I get big it. gaps, like six years <laughs> and ten years apart. So shame. I felt so bad because I was actually quite a mean big sister. Like I actually. This is honesty moment. No, honestly, right honestly, now? I felt so bad. Because, but now think about it. When I was 13, the next one was like seven. So now I want to go hang out with my friends. I got this yeah. little seven-year-old trying to tag along. It was annoying. Yeah. Then, but you also <laughs> carry the responsibility thing. So you're going, exactly. I owe it to her, but I don't want it to, she, her to be here. Exactly. <laughs> and also, my parents were so hard on me. Like, oh, really? they were so strict. And then I just felt like they just got away with anything. Like it used to annoy me at the same time. So shame. I, I felt bad. And later in life, now we're super close. Now we laugh about it. Now I always say to my sister, I feel so bad. I was such a mean big sister. Um, but I mean, I suppose that was like the time we were in, you know? I just, I, I love that. So, so you say life shapes us. I agree with you. Um, what did it shape? Like what do you think came out of that season for you? Like if you look back now and you think back to your three-year-old self and what, God was kind of doing in your life back then. What what good things happened there that are showing up in the world of business and family? And you know, I honestly feel like, and I know it's the word so many people use, but that resilience. Yeah. Like, you things are going to happen throughout our lives that we are not in control of. But it's about how we're going to take those moments and how we're going to actually show up in those moments. So, it just taught me, you know, like. This is what you have. This is what you have right now. And make the most of it. Yeah. And just, you know, keep moving forward. And, and like I spoke to you earlier, you know, my, my folks never had a lot of money. Like, I remember just doing chores around the house just so that I could, like, be allowed to go play with my friends. I'd have to fix roof tiles. I'd have to help my dad on the car. We should bring all this back. I'm telling you. Bring back the chores. I'm telling you. Star charts, put them aside. You don't get stars for any of this. <laughs> you just got to do the work. And that wasn't even to get pocket money. That was so I could just Basics. go out and play. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so I think all these things. And then we'd actually be, have fun doing the chores. Like you'd see the fun in it, you know. Um, yeah. And just appreciating everything. Just appreciate so, everything. So I, I grew up a little bit similar. Um, different worlds, but we didn't come from much. And we had chores. Like Your for days. Proper. Cleaned the cars. I remember cleaning a metallic <laughs> car for the first time, I think it was. And uh, my dad coming out and saying, you missed a spot. And I'm thinking, Dad, oh like, word. honestly, it's such a basic little thing. I was like 10. But, you know, when I look back on that, I'm so grateful for how my folks pushed for us to take on the disciplines of life. Um, your story sounds the same. Mm. Like, it's showing up in the world of Unilever now. Others are, like, checking out when things get tough. You're checking in. Mm. So, um, so do you think it's character, though? Because do you, some parents, some kids that had parents like that, don't think back fondly. Yeah. Is it a character thing? Uh, you know? I mean, I think it must be. I think it definitely is a character thing in terms of hanging in there, sticking yeah. to something, committing. And, and interesting you bring up discipline. So one of the things I started doing when I was very young was ballet. I used to do ballet um, right up until I was an intermediate and I stopped. Oh, I wow. could have done my teachers, but I, I stopped sadly because surfing was my world. And I was like, and ballet is hardcore. You got to go. It's the whole, hardcore, yeah. and it, and and that was the thing. Hey, my mom would not let me miss a lesson. She was like, "You are going rain or shine," and it taught me discipline because mm -hmm. I'd have to practice at home. I have to do all these things. You couldn't skip because you would fall behind and you'd be behind the whole class. So. That little thing also just taught me so much about yeah. if you put in the hard work, you seriously see the benefit. You can do a pirouette 
way faster and you're not going to fall over, you're more graceful, like all these different things taught me a lot about discipline because I think we lose that. Yeah. We let kids start a sport and two weeks later they, they want to quit. Sorry, no. You see, it out, you see it out for the term at least. Yeah. Then you can quit. But I love this because if people see your life, they see surfer Janine with a, you know, let's call it a high profile business position. When I see behind the scenes, I see very disciplined Janine. Surfing just matters to her joy. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. it's not this casual life that ends up in a great business role. It's a very intentional life, like sticking around. So that hard thing that your parents had on you, seeing it through your mom, you say with ballet, are you like that with your employees? In terms of seeing things through? Yeah. I or think do you I go am. easy on them? No, I think I am. I'm, I'm very much like, guys, we've committed to do something, we need to see it through. Like we can't, there's, there's two different things. Firstly, yes, we need to be agile in certain ways. So I'm not saying, okay, this thing is totally tanking, let's keep totally tanking. Yeah, sure. yeah. But there's certain things we have to be consistent. You have to be consistent in terms of your approach, the way that you deal with your team. You can't do one thing for one person and a different thing for someone else. I feel like discipline and consistency runs through so many different veins if you look at business and if you look at people. And that is what gets you credibility yeah. as a leader is when you are consistent in everything you do, people know what's coming, you're the same person that you are today and tomorrow, you're not this amazing mm. person in this forum and then you're like this angry person when times are tough, that you're the same person. And, and I really think that comes back down to being disciplined, understanding who you are and what, what drives you, what, yeah. what is important to you. And that is why, like I say, in the mornings, it's our special time to go surf. It's like the time we carve out of our day. Like no matter what, I'll make sure those lunches are packed so that we have half an hour to get in the ocean yeah. because it's special. I love that you fight for just a half an hour in the ocean. I think it's that's so cool. Just half an hour. I think what with us is we've got to have that balance in the morning. Like she thrives on having a surf, even if it's horrible. Really, yeah. She just wants she'll, to get wet. Like she will say, "Please, babe, this is slow surf." That like if she she's not running, she wants to surf. It's Just the great thing that we can spend this time together uh, in your ocean, and we're just grateful. We ask that you bless our day. Commit our kids to you, their safety, just help them at school. Just pray for acceptance and that you guide their day, our day in terms of all our challenges. And keep us safe from sharks, rocks, boards and sandbanks. And let us have fun. Happy Friday. In Jesus' amen. name, Amen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I mean, it just like, you feel so like ready for the day. You, get, you gave our film guy a workout today. <laughs> Jean had to kick a little bit harder in the ocean today. Yeah, I know. He's going to have like calves like this now when he gets <laughs> out. <laughs> and now he wants a new housing. I think it's awesome. Do you find the people that you, um, I like this space, the people that you lead, that you, let's call it, are a little bit harder on, you expect more from, do you find they actually lean into you? They actually, over the long term, they trust you more because you've, you've led them through you've taught them disciplines, do they actually find themselves trusting you? They do, but not always in the beginning, hey? So, yeah, I mean, course. I've had people in my team where you can see the potential and sometimes they have to be hard because I know yeah. I need to get something out of them and sometimes it's about almost being hard and then you back off and you let them internalize it, you know, um, that kind of thing. So, for example... I like this. I would have customers like in my previous roles that I've had relationships with for a very long time. And they would always come to me, Janine, we're not happy about this. Janine, we're not happy about that. And then I had another guy that I brought in and kind of groomed him up into this role where I wanted him to take that so that I could be freed up to now do other things. And I kind of dropped, not dropped him in the deep end, but I was like, no, I said, I'm no longer dealing with this customer. You're going to deal with him. And he is a hard customer. Let me tell you, like this oak is next level. And this poor guy, he didn't know what to do, you know, in a sense. He said, just at least try. Just at least try. Like two or three 
negotiation meetings, and then let's see where you go from there. And he would come here, oh, Jay, this guy is so hectic. Oh, my word, he's so horrible. So he would talk to you about it. He, he felt, he felt to at me. ease to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, he would speak to me. I'd be like, how's it going with him? He's like, no, this guy's so hectic. Oh, my word. I was like, it's building character and you're learning something new. Just tell yourself that, okay? Now, him and this customer are like this. Amazing. And like later down the line, this, this guy, his name's Bernard, actually, he came to me. He was like, Jay, thank you so much for just trusting me and believing in me. Amazing. And I'm like, I know you could, I said to him, Vern, I, kn I knew you could do it. I know, and you can see the potential in people, but people don't see that in themselves unless you give them that opportunity. Yeah. And that's also a big thing. If you don't give people the chance, if you keep wanting to be in control of everything and not giving people the chance, you're not going to give them the opportunity to actually show up and then like surprise themselves. You yeah. know, like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I like that. So give the opportunity and don't rescue them from the pain of it. Like, mm -mm. let, them, let them go through it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's really good. Again, that's the stuff when someone hears your passion for your team and people. You speak so much about people. Mm. They don't necessarily hear you, you know, raising the bar and yeah. expecting more from your team. And your team's obviously high performing because you've expected great things mm. from them. Mm. How do you keep raising the bar? Like I say, it's almost like I have this, like you almost tighten, like you almost like, not, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it's almost like you put people in uncomfortable positions and then you empower them to make decisions. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I can't know everything and I can't have yeah. my hand on every single lever, which let me tell you, I found very difficult to let go at one stage because I I am very involved. I am very hands-on. I wanted to do everything myself. Yeah, because that takes you back to the three-year-old so, self that exactly. stepped up and now you're having to let go and there's this whole thing going on. Exactly. And it's not because I don't think someone won't do it as well as I can do it. It's not because of that, but it's just because I want to make sure it's done and I want to make sure everyone's fine. There are so many people, <laughs> I'm just going to look at the cameras for a moment, that are, um, that are identifying with this right now. Mm. There's so many, not control freaks, just people who believe they can do a great job. Yeah. Maybe that's the same thing. 100%. And, and you know what? You need to put things, you need to zoom out sometimes and say, okay, cool. I'm so busy doing all these things. What more could I actually be doing strategically or looking ahead or future proofing or whatever for my business yeah. or for my people? So I think in terms of when, when you talk about raising the bar, it really is about empowering people and blocking what is blocking them or suppressing them, whether it's sure. confidence, whether it's a process, whether it's learning something, whether it's showing them the vision and letting them go after it in the way they want to. By empowering them, that is what raises the bar because then everyone has kind of their identity, they know what they're going for, and they have their, that um, autonomy to make the decisions yeah. quickly. And that is why like, our business like has been successful because it's been entrepreneurial. People yeah. have you know, being passionate. I like how you say raising the bar is actually helping people take the cap off themselves. So it's, not, it's less about you expecting more and more about you going, where could you just be better? Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So where you speak a lot about God being involved in your business. And if I hear your story and you and Jono and just your lives, I mean, there's just God all over it. I think it's mm. amazing. Um, like, where do you feel like, what do you feel God's doing with you in the business place? Like, where do you feel like there's those moments maybe where you go, okay, God, this is exactly what I've been born for. I know you've put me here or I need you now. Is there like examples you have of that? So I think, listen, there's been times where I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? Of course. You know, like when I think back to when I moved into my previous role, looking after the food solutions part of the business, everything was great and we were a high-performing team and I'd driven a lot of the growth in the business before I'd moved into the the managing director role. And then COVID obviously hit. And I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Why am I here? Like, God, please help me. I don't know what's going to happen. And, and I think often we don't feel like we actually are good enough to yeah. be in a situation. Sometimes I find myself in, in rooms full of very highly intelligent people that know a lot of stuff. And I think, oh my gosh, please don't ask me a question because I don't know what I'm going to actually say. So we often question ourselves, and I think it's the enemy that comes into yeah. our minds to actually make us doubt. But we have to trust that God puts us in a 
role for a particular reason at a particular time. Brilliant. And it's not always to deliver the results or move the business to the next level. It could be because that is what the people are going to need at that time. Just to be there. I love that. And when I look back, I was there to carry this team through COVID, where their spouses were losing jobs, where restaurants were shutting down. It, like Everything came to a complete standstill. It was the first time we'd ever had a pandemic. Yeah. And God wanted me in that moment to actually lead people through it. I love that. I've always felt like the greatest gift God gives us is the gift of presence, not performance. Like mm. he's, our performance is less, is less impressive to him than our presence, just yeah. showing up, you know? Yeah. So when I hear your story, I just think that's so cool. Like you just, you just showed up. He needed your presence in that team. Yeah. The performance would take care of itself around gifting, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I, I love that. And I just, yeah, I honestly, like, he's never going to put you somewhere where you're not, where you're not going to flourish. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's never going to put you in a position and, and go and drop you and let you down. He never will do that. And, I mean, even now, let me tell you, I don't, I don't go every single day going, oh, winning every day. That was my next question. No, I mean, some days I go, flip, I love my job. Oh, yeah. I love the people. I just, I love it. But then some days I'll be like, I'll have the thought in my mind going, yeah, everything's okay now, but imagine it just crashes. Yeah. Then what? What are you going to do? Imagine this just stops working. And I know where that's coming from. What do you do to get through that moment? Like, what are your triggers to get out of that, like, this is not going to work out cycle? You know what? I identify where that thought's coming from. Okay. Because fear and doubt is not from God. And it's easy to kind of get distracted and go down this wormhole of self-doubt yeah. and everything. But you actually have to physically say... No, I don't believe that because God does things that are not logical yeah. and he doesn't put us in places to fail. And even if we think we failed, we're actually still not failing yeah, because we're exactly. learning something through it and, and that certain things have to happen for better things to happen. So I think we've got to identify those, those horrible little voices in the back of our minds that will still pop in from time to time because they want to detract you from... What is really going on? You doing God's work. He wants to detract us all the time yeah. and get us off the kind of the right road, you know. So, what do you um, what do you think you're learning now? So, I mean, I'm in this new role, a whole different part of the business, new team. Haven't worked with these people before. New team as well. So it's brand a whole new, new team. team. Brand new line oh, manager. I didn't brand that. new everything. Brand new countries. It's like completely wow. different. So I'm also just pausing and absorbing a lot about what's going on around me. And again, I'm here for the people. I'm here to identify opportunities both for the business and for people to grow. Sure. But I really believe this season is about your circle of influence. So I think I said it in the business breakfast that there was a prophecy about our minister to kings and queens. Yeah which for me is, whether it's in a community, whether it is at work, it doesn't matter. There's always a king and a queen, a member of authority um, that is present. And I really believe that God wants me to kind of minister to these people in ways, in terms of my leadership style or the way that I treat my team or just having moments with them. So I feel like the role I'm in now is opening up the circle of influence wow. into the African leaders and global leaders and Department of Education and stuff like that. So I really believe the season That's I'm in That's amazing. I know. I'm so excited. I'm like, do you see yourself? Do you, yeah, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Do you see yourself in politics? No, absolutely not. Everyone says that. You do, do you realize everyone says no and then they end up in politics? But you know what? Because previously when we were in the whole community, remember I said when we were in Westbrook, I used to do a lot of community yeah. initiatives. I dealt with all politics. the politics. And I was like, no, I don't want to be paid to do politics. Like, I believe I can have more, I can have a lot of influence. I don't have to be in politics. Mm. I can have influence through like other it. ways, you know, partnerships yeah. and that kind of thing. So, yeah. So fun. do you dream of uh, influencing rooms that build nations? Like actually showing up in a boardroom of people that are making Absolutely. calls for the country? Absolutely. Like, I really, I mean, every time it's so weird. Like every time... I get a new role or whatever. John looks at me and just goes, kings and queens, baby. Kings that's so and queens. Cool. Like that's what we always just remind ourselves. That's so cool. And you know what? I have to just say, like, I could never do what I do without my husband because 
he Shout on out, a, no seriously like he supports me so much like when i am having my moments like oh my gosh how am i going to do this crisis he's like but has god ever let you down mm. so like he reminds me you know what i mean so yeah, I definitely couldn't do all these things. Even just hand, like with the kids, he's the one that will go, like if I'm in late meetings for whatever reason, he'll go pick them up. He'll just help me. I know that he's got it, you know, yeah. so. He is a legend yeah. though. Such a legend. I speak about when he, he had my back when I was a little grommet on the beach That's back in so the day. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I didn't think we'd cross paths sometime later and tell each other our stories, but he's a legend. So yeah, shout out, Jonah, if you ever. And you know, jealous. which is quite funny, and I think also just, sorry, I know we're kind of going all over the place, but. My family prayed about everything, like everything. Your growing up family. Growing up. And I used to pray for my husband. I used to be 13 and I used to pray that I'd find the right husband and my mom and dad used to pray. And I always imagined I'd get a husband, I don't know why, tall with dark hair. And I ended up getting a guy that was strong with no hair. <laughs> it's like so funny how that works out. But um, he gave me the right yeah. person. He's my best friend. It's like, it's actually crazy how God just, you know, yeah. created John and created me and yeah. That and is Janine awesome. is the and Janine is the female name for John. No. I no. swear I only found that out the other day. I was like, no, that is so weird. Yeah. So anyway. I'm lost for words right now. <laughs> this story is so inspiring. Um what is your dream for like ten years from now? Like where where are you ten years from now? I don't know. Um, and I think I also touched on this, you know, you're like, what is success? I'm like, I don't know what it is. As long as I can just keep being in the space where I'm doing what God wants me to do, I just know we'll be happy. So in 10 years from now, I hope that I am having an influence over people. I hope that I am having a positive influence on the country, um, business, whatever it is. So do I. That's all I want to do. And I want to leave people and businesses in a better state than when I found them. I want people to feel valued and love feel that. loved. I think if that, what you just said now, if we could get that into every person's psyche, I want to leave my family in a better state than when I, yeah. my, my business in a better, my church in a better state than when I arrived. Mm. Like if that could just be our, our motive just in God's grace, I it would know. be so awesome. I know. Instead of just being so tense and, you know, like I find myself, you know, driving around, you see people are so tense and so, angry at each other you yeah. know like just be kind and just think about what what is that other person going through you don't know what they're going through they might be upset because they've just lost someone you yeah. know so we just need to just take a breath and just give people you know more kindness and love yeah i love this because and we're going to probably start to close but i think mm. that the tension that you keep i don't know if you're trying to speak about it but it's this tension between we must go through hard stuff to become something 100%. worth being used and kindness and love are everything. Yeah. So many people, especially in the Christian world, if I'm honest, um, don't think that the hard stuff can go alongside kindness and love. I love the hard stuff. I love speaking about the hard stuff because there's that song, or obviously there's a scripture and a song about in the crushing and the pressing, yeah. I'm making new wine. In the hard times is when God is crushing us to get something new, to get us ready for something bigger and better. Mm. So we must not run away from those moments. We must embrace those moments. Um, and we must be thankful that we go through things. And I mean, another quite a personal thing to share is after I had my daughter, I went through quite a bad miscarriage, like really bad and um, affected me Badly physically, mentally, I had sure. insomnia, I couldn't sleep, I also saw a psychiatrist and everything, oh. just because it was just a traumatic event on my body as well, obviously mentally, and on the family and whatever. And you know that I look back on that moment, and I'm so grateful I went through that, because imagine my daughter goes through something like that, or a friend goes through something, I can be there for them to say, guys... I've been through what you're going through and it's going to be yeah. okay. And this is how you're going to get through it. So we need to appreciate the hard things in life because I think it just refines us and it gets us ready for even better things. If things went perfectly all the time, we also wouldn't need God. Yeah. Because we, we draw closer to him. Yeah, and I we, heard, you know uh, what I mean? It's Joyce crazy. Meyer once said, she said, God didn't promise us a storm-free life. He just said, I'd give you wings to rise yeah. above it. 
And I think that's the whole thing. Like so often the, the, the prayer is, God, take away the storm. But actually the scripture is, God, give me the wings to rise above. Yeah. And so you clearly have found that faith for wings and seasons, which is incredible. I think it's amazing. I think the one thing, though, that we that I, did, I wanted to just mention was about leading people through hard times and yes. how you show up. So I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, hey? Like, honestly, being in a corporate environment and seeing when all hell breaks loose, seeing how people react. <laughs> Some of them point fingers. I've seen grown men freak out. I've seen so many different things happening. And... I think that's the one thing where I know God has helped me because he's helped me just to be calm and not freak out and not point fingers because it's easy to kind of revert to this human fighting kind of yeah. nature when things are hard. And I think the one thing that I also realized was people are watching how you will show up when things are hard because when things are cruising, no you can be the most you. joyful person it's awesome you're so like happy oh the, my leader's so awesome but when things get tough yeah you have to humble yourself you can't be pointing fingers you can't be lashing out at people you need to actually just take two steps back and just say lord please help me to be calm and just to be a good example to people i mean those three things you just said are so powerful you got to humble yourself so make yourself less than the most important person in the room yeah you got to take two steps back so actually, you don't need to comment immediately. Just take a breather and then ask God for the wisdom of what to say next. I think those three things might just be worth the whole yeah. podcast, <laughs> honestly. But yeah. you know, there's a, there's, a, um, there's a word for this thing they're looking for in leaders at the moment. They mm. call it a calm, non-anxious presence. Mm. And so the best leaders in the world right now are those that carry a calm, non-anxious presence. I think anyone listening to this could ask mm. themselves the honest question. Mm. When it's all going down, Mm. Do I carry a calm, non-anxious presence? <laughs> I don't think I always have. I certainly feel that when I'm in your presence. I feel like if I was on your team and I don't work on your team, I know I'd have to work extra hard. I know that about you. I know I would uh, get given opportunities. But I think the best part of it is that I would have a leader that is just steady. Mm. And that is, very, um, that is very satisfying for somebody that has an ambitious life that they're mm. unsure, like, unsure of. Yeah. I've got someone that's steady that can help me journey mm. through it. So again, I said in the business breakfast, but I want to honor that. I think calm, non-anxious presence summarizes you well, mm. even in the ocean this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that amazing, but yeah. you're just calm and you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. Janine, thank you. And, uh, and as I said before, we are praying for the kings and queens that God puts in your world. No doubt you're going to minister to kings and queens. So um, I hope everyone's enjoyed this. If you're watching it, uh, there's more to come. Watch this space. Thank you, Jenny. Awesome. Thank you.